Hey everybody, I'm Jack Reedy with Future Pastimes, and I'm a designer on the Dune expansions for the classic Dune board game from Gale Force 9. And I'm going to be talking about the hidden mobile stronghold that belongs to the Ixian faction. And this is from the first expansion for Dune, the Ixians and Tlilaxu expansion. And I want to make sure that people understand how the hidden mobile stronghold is supposed to work um, and all of the different nuances associated with it. So let's start off with um, just the shape of this token. You'll notice that it has a pointy end here, and this is to help players understand what territory the hidden mobile stronghold is in. And you use the pointy part to say, yeah, we are located right there in that sector of that territory, uh, because sometimes you can't fit the actual token, but we want to know, all right, yeah, I'm right there. I'm in the sector of this tiny territory where the spice blow is. Uh, that way, it's it's clear to everybody where you are located. And then, you know, you put your forces in the, the stronghold part of it. The other thing that, to understand about this is that the, the stronghold itself it essentially is like a territory within a territory, very much like Habanya Siege. Habanya Siege is located within Habanya Ridge Flat. This is one territory, it covers a couple of sectors, but it's one territory and this one is in the middle of it. So if you're moving, you're going to move into this territory, then you can move into the siege. And the same is true of the hidden mobile stronghold. So if I'm located right there, if you are moving from the polar sink, you got to move into this territory, then you can move into the hidden mobile stronghold itself. And that is because getting into this hidden mobile stronghold is not necessarily easy for everybody. Only the Ixians can ship directly to it. And it is a stronghold, so they're paying stronghold rates to ship there. One spice per force. And they can ship directly there. Even if the Ixians don't have any forces in the stronghold itself, they can ship directly to it. Other forces, if they want to ship, they'd actually have to ship into the territory that it's in. And then they'd have to move in there. Now, they could also move, if they're already on the board... Uh, but depending on where it's located, it's not always easy to get into, even with ornithopters. If you're located down here in Sialgo South, there's no stronghold that you can ship into and then get there from three. So here you're like one, two, three gets you to this territory, but you need one more to get into the stronghold itself. Uh, but it should be pointed out that the Bene Gesserit can send an advisor with the Ixians if they are shipping directly into the Hidden Mobile Stronghold themselves. It's just one of those little insidious elements of the Bene Gesserit, which is why they're a faction that we love to hate. Uh, they can send those advisors along in advance, um, directly in there, and then on a subsequent turn, for instance, they could flip, and they're already there in the Stronghold. Although it should be noted, even if they are in the Stronghold, they cannot directly ship themselves down there into that stronghold. Nobody else can. Now let's talk a little bit about the mobile part of the hidden mobile stronghold. Um, this is a token that if the Ixians uh, occupy it, they can move it. Um, and, and let's talk about when uh, they're going to uh, place and move the token itself. Sometimes it's hard for people to remember because... Um, and turn one, they're placing it after the storm, but on subsequent turns, it's going to be before the storm moves. And the way that I remember it is I just go A, B. It's A on turn one, and it's B on turns two through ten. A, after the storm has been initially placed, the Ixians decide where they want to put the stronghold with their starting forces in it. And that is just so that they are not going to be caught in the storm on that first turn. If they were placing it before the storm, and then they say, all right, and then the storm is moving one, then they're they're stuck in that first turn and they can't do anything. So that was to avoid that. Uh, but on the subsequent turns, uh, they have to move that stronghold before the storm gets either dialed by uh, the players when the Fremen are not in the game in advance uh, or the Fremen storm cards when they are in the game and you're playing advanced. Um, so the movement of the uh, Hidden Mobile Stronghold is three territories. Um, <clears throat> and there's a little bit of confusion in on, on the sheet about what exactly that means. Because it says, uh, subsequently before the storm is dialed, as long as your forces, Ixians, um, occupy it, you may move your Hidden Stronghold up to three territories, pointing it at a sector at any non-stronghold territory. So you can point this 
and it can be in any territory on the map except a stronghold. You can't say, yes, the hidden mobile stronghold is in Arakeen. It, it can't go there, but it can go anywhere else. Um, but then it says when you move into, from, or through a sector containing spice, you may immediately collect two spice per force in your stronghold. Now, uh, some people have interpreted that to mean that when it moves through a sector containing spice. So let's say, for, for instance, that uh, you move the hidden stronghold from here to here, and there's spice down here where you're saying, well, there it's in a sector containing spice. Well, that's not what that means. It means that when you move it into a territory, it needs to move into the sector of that territory that has the spice in order to collect it. Now, when you're moving through a territory, it's not as big a deal, but when you're ending it up, so like, let's say I've, I've moved it, you know, one, two, and then three, and I want to be in Sialgo North. If I want the spice that's here, I need to be in that sector. So that's what's important about that. You need to be in the sector that has the spice in order to get the spice. The other part about this that people have had some confusion about is this notion of when you move into, from, or through. Um, that doesn't mean that if you're like, yes, I'm going, I'm going into and then through <clears throat> and then <laughs> out of this territory, I get to collect three times. You're only able to collect once per territory. So, you know, if you start here in this sector that contains spice and there's spice there, you're moving out of it um, into this one you would collect and then there, or if you were like, yes, I'm going through, you collect from each territory one time. So um, as long as you are moving either into a territory that contains spice in the proper sector, um, you are coming from a territory that contains spice, or on your journey, you go through a territory containing spice. As long as it's in the sector that has the spice, you collect once per territory. In terms of how much spice you collect, again, it is two spice per force in the stronghold. It doesn't matter which forces they are. And the only reason I point that out is because if we flip the sheet over and we uh, take a look at their cyborg advantage, so they've got the two different forces. They've got their cyborg forces, which are starred, and their suboids. And this is even in basic. They have them. The cyborgs have a collection rate that is three spice per force. Um, and that is irrespective of whether they have ornithopters. Um, so if if all the only stronghold they occupy is the hidden mobile stronghold and they're out in the desert collecting spice, their cyborgs will collect three spice, the subboids will collect two spice normally. Most other forces you're collecting two spice per force, unless you have the ornithopters in Arakeen and Carthag uh, by occupying those those strongholds, in which case your collection rate per force is three. And that's true too for the Ixians. So if the Ixians occupy Arakeen and they have a mix of cyborgs and suboids collecting spice out in the desert, each of those forces would collect three. But without the ornithopters, your cyborgs can collect three spice. However, that has no bearing on when you're collecting spice via the hidden mobile stronghold. So it doesn't matter if they're all cyborgs in there, it's still only two spice per token in this stronghold that that is yours, that you collect that spice. Um, so it, it's a nice way for them to be able to swoop in. And I know a lot of people imagine that the hidden mobile stronghold is like a giant Roomba uh, zooming through the desert, sucking spice up. It's not really how it works. It's more like a MASH unit. If you know what uh, the show MASH, it was about a mobile army surgical hospital. It was mobile, not that it moved on its own, but that you could pack it up and then relocate it. And in the process of relocating their hidden mobile stronghold th two, three territories away, uh, they're able to get spice that's out there in the desert. So that's how it works. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not on wheels. It's not moving around. It doesn't float. Just packing it up with your cyborgs and you're moving it and you're like, hey, look, spice, let's grab that. So that's how that works. That is uh, pretty much everything you need to know about how the Hidden Mobile Stronghold itself works. Um, hopefully that will clear up any confusion that you have had on there. If you have other questions about 
to hit a mobile stronghold, be sure to hit me up in the comments and I'll answer those as quickly as I can. Uh, let me know what you think of the hit a mobile stronghold. It's nice to have another stronghold in the game. Um, a lot of people, for some reason, when the Ixians uh, are in the game and they're starting in there, they kind of forget that the Ixians can ship into Carthag and move into Tabor or Arakeen and they could win on turn one, especially because they're starting with uh, presumably the best treachery card out of the lot and they kind of know what else is out there. So they're a very strong faction early in the game. Um, one of the best contenders for a turn one victory. Um, so be careful about that. When they're in the game, you want to block those other strongholds, especially the ones close to um, each other so that they can't just swoop in and win the game very easily on the first turn. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.